Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is Dr. Noshin Tariq Siddiqui and I'm taking your pharmacognosy 418 course number. In our last lecture, we have discussed uh, the drugs which are of different origin. As you all know that pharmacognosy mainly deals with the drug isolated from natural sources. And we, in our last lecture, touched the different classes of drugs which have the different origins. I've also told you about the drugs which are of particular interest. And among those drugs, there are some of the drugs which are of particular interest are honey, gelatin, shellac, musk, seaweed, ambergris, cod liver oil, cantharides, and spermicity. These are some of the drugs which we are going to touch in our syllabus, according to our syllabus. Number one is the drug, which the name is shellac. Shellac is basically a resin. What is a resin? Resin, basically you have seen some of the plants or some of the, um, you must have seen some of the plants or um, trunk, tree trunk in which there are excretions of uh, sticky type secretions. Later uh, in your next uh, year profession, you will study what are resins and what are the chemical compositions of resins, right? Now you just have to you know, remember that resins are some sticky materials which are used for different purposes. And just like shellac, shellac is a resin. And while you're going through resin, you will know the different, uh, and the different uh, properties they have and how they are used. So shellac is a resin, resin I've told you, it is kind of a sticky flammable material which comes out from the, uh, ooze out or secretes from the uh, tree trunk sometimes. And in this, uh, it's uh, animal origin. So uh, shellac is, uh, this resin is uh, secreted by female lac, but there is a bug which uh, resides on different trees. And these bugs, after eating those parts of the uh, trees, they secrete a sac or um, a, a, they secrete a substance, which is a resinous material and which is used in different preparations, pharmaceutical preparations and other preparations as well. The shellac is a resin secreted by the female lac bug. It is only secreted by female lac and male bug don't secrete it. On trees in the forest of India and Thailand, the mainly, mainly these uh, uh, bugs reside in the trees which are grown in India and Thailand. It is processed and sol sold as dry flakes and dissolve in ethanol to make liquid shellac. Basically, the product which we get from shellac, the bug, is not um, so refined that we can you know, market it as it is. But we have to, you know, process it and then it is sold at, in the form of dry flakes and that those dry flakes are then dissolved in ethanol to make liquid shellac, which is used as a brush on colorant, food glaze or wood varnish. It is used for basically modifying or beautifying the surface of anything, you know, colorant. Brush on color, it means if you can enhance the uh, appearance of a color, food glaze, you're, you're enhancing the appearance of food and also wood finish. Now the biological origin, the lacifer lacca is the biological origin of the, the, the name, the scientific name of that bug, which uh, belongs to the family Cocaidae. Its main uses, shellac is most often used as a finish for fine furniture. Mostly it was used because, uh, you know, previously it was used because of its color as, it, as a, it's shown in the picture. It is slightly brown in color or uh, you can say yellowish brown in color. So it gives a very pleasant look to the furniture. So it was usually used for uh, this purpose, but later, you know, uh, when it was bleached, it was used in pharmaceutical industry as well. How pharmaceutical industry in it is used? It is used in tablet coating formulations, micro encapsulations, metric formulations, enteric coating and binder. It is also used as a binder. Shellac has also been used as an ingredient in hairspray and their other cosmetics.
Lac used to make shellac is actually an insect product. I've told you this is from a uh, female lac bird. The insects live on several trees of the Fabiaceae family, Reminaceae family, Sapindaceae family. These are some of the families on which these insects reside or feed upon. The insects is a scale insect. The type of insects, like for leather, is a scale insect. The reddish translucent material from the insect is called seed lac. It's treated with minerals and other resins to make shellac. When it is coming out from the bug, it is called seed lac. And when it is processed, processed then it is called shellac. Shellac is used in high polish interior, interior spirit varnishes and vexes. Most of it comes from India. Okay, a little history about the lag bird. Lag has been cultivated for three centuries. For most of that time, the lag bird secretions were valued for the purple red dye dried from being soaked in water. As you all know, when you know in historical times there were no synthetic uh, colors, so people used to you know, uh, extract colors from. Uh, the natural origin. And for purple color, they usually uh, extract it from the lac bulb. And they didn't know what it is, but they just, uh, you know, uh, extract it for this purpose. This dye was used to color silk, leather, and cosmetics and was cultivated primarily for this purpose until 1870. Before 1870, it was only used for this purpose, that is dyeing or cosmetic. Shellac is generally made from two, two ingredients, raw seed lac and ethyl alcohol. Shellac is basically a combination of these two things. Raw shellac lac, which is, uh, which is coming from um, animal origin, that is the female bug, and ethyl alcohol. In fact, most companies want to purify shellac as completely as possible. Impurities from the bug, the cocoon, etc., are removed as our natural excess. Because there are other things as well in the uh, in the seed lac. It's not only the parts of the body of the insects or the cocoon where it, it, uh, it basically it grows, but there are other natural vexes as well, which are you know they, which are part of these uh, um, this. Uh, just part of this raw material, so we have to remove that as well. Shellac is generally shipped in dry or flat form, so you know we have to make it like you know the, before shipping we have to make it dry and in a flat form, and then is re-moisturized with an alcohol solvent, generally denatured alcohol. Some companies add ingredients to lengthen the shelf life of their product, but will not reveal these proprietary additives, of course. Uh, nobody, you know, reveals its uh, secret ingredient, you know, as you can say that the secret ingredients is never uh, dis uh, disclosed. Shellac is bleached or made into clear shellac are dissolved in sodium carbonate and centrifuged to remove insoluble and then bleached with sodium hypochlorite. First, it is when you are making a bleached shellac product, first you um, dissolve it in sodium carbonate, and then you centrifuge uh, the mixture with the sodium carbonate, which removes the insoluble particles, and then uh, bleach with sodium hypochlorite. Means shellac, which is colored, now become colorless with the uh, bleaching with sodium hypochlorite. What is the basically the manufacturing process? So, number one is the role of the lag bug itself, of course, because you're getting it from the lag bug. Shellac is produced by a tiny red insects. Swarm of insects feed on certain trees, primarily in India and Thailand, known in, informally as lag trees. They're also known as lag trees, and there are not one or two, there are thousands of uh, these insects, which are called swarms of insects. They basically feed on these type of trees, which are primarily um, located in India and Thailand. The lag bug's life cycle is only six months. The life cycle is very short, which is only six months, in which 
time they eat, propagate, and secrete the resins they have taken in form of the tree to produce shellac. In certain seasons of the year, these insects swarm in huge numbers of the trees, settle on branches, and project protrusions into the trees to penetrate into the bark. Basically, they they uh, grow, uh, they settle on branches, and there is a protrusion in in their back or somewhere in, in the body part, which you know they penetrate into the bark, where they suck. Or uh, they suck the sap of the you know the plant. They continue sucking up until they die. Okay. These insect swarms in huge numbers on the trees settle on branches and project fusions into the trees to penetrate the bark. They suck up the sap and absorbs it until they feed themselves to death. Basically, they suck it so much that they die. This, and they, or you can say that they absorb until they die. So it is also called that, it's also called the feast of death among the indigenous people. They call it the feast of death because when you are eating and you are continuously eating and eating, then you can, then you die because there's a certain amount you can, you know, digest. So that's why they, they uh, the insects also dies. At this same time, Propagation continues, and at the same time, at the same time before it dies, the propagation also continues, which means that the female bug lie about thousand eggs before they die. Before dying, the uh, the, uh, the female bug it lays about a thousand eggs. So you can think that the swarm, how the swarm is builds up uh, by these insects. The sap is chemically altered in the lag bug's body and is then exuded into the tree branches. On contact with air, the excretion from a hard shell-like covering over the entire swamp. Basically, this sap is, when the, the sap is absorbed by the insect, then it is chemically altered in the, uh, the lag bug's body. And when you know uh, it is converted, it is also executed into the branches. And basically, it covers all the branches. It don't get into the branches, but it covers the branches. And then it dies on contact with air, because when it is coming out from the uh, lag bug's body, it is not uh, solid form. But when it contacts with air, it gets solidifies. Okay. The excretion forms a hard shell-like covering over the entire swarm. This covering forms a crust over the twigs and insects as the female lag bug executing the ingested sap she is preparing to die and is providing a fluid in which her eggs will mature under protection. She, what she do, that she the female bug basically, it is executing this sap which is inside of her. It, she is also uh, giving eggs. And this sap, which, which is she is executing, you know, there are thousands of eggs. So, to what, what this sap will do, this sap will provide nutrition to its egg, life to its egg, and they will later will be used by us as in the form of shell egg. The male role is to fertilize the female. The only role male has is to fertilize the female. And it is after fertilization that the female lag output is vastly increased. The adult males and females become inactive and the young starts to break through the crust and swarm out. They become inactive, both the male and female, and the young come up, comes out. This is a uh, six month cycle, basically. Okay. What uh, you can see that there is a period in which, which is if we start from egg lane, then uh, end of a lay, uh, egg lane, there are certain yellow spots which in which indicates that the that the female is shrinking, and uh, the eggs are out, and when they we, we see orange spots, then um, eggs are about to hatch. 
then larva appears these are larva crawls to different parts of the you know plants and they form pupa and these pupa then uh, uh, grows into male and female adult <coughs> uh, sorry male and female lacbird the male you know it's again uh, sometimes you know a metamorphosis occurs and they fly away and they get go in there but the female remains on the branches and they again got mated with the adult male and then they again they produce eggs which you know which stick on the twigs and then uh, the again the eggs laying done and this is the whole cycle which is around of six months this is the actual picture of uh, the swarms of uh, blackbirds and how you know so in in this swarm these are eggs and the sap which is coming out from the uh, lagbird and uh, this is one of the lagbird okay how we are refining the crust resins there there are three types of processes heat process solvent process and bleach chillag refining the crusty resin how you refine workers cut millions of encrusted branches these branches you know these branches which i have shown you earlier there's these branches you know these branches the workers cut millions of encrusted branches called sticklack for transportation to refiners of some sort either hand refined or mechanically refined they are transported to refiners where they they can you know uh do it with hands or they can use a machinery to take these off take these sacks off from the twigs at refining centers sticklack is strapped to remove the secretions from the twigs sticklack and granlack is ground with rot rot uh, rotating milestones chakki jaise kehte hain na usse jo hai na uske andar dal ke and then they are rotating the resulting ground material is quite impure containing resins insects remains twigs leaves etc of course when you know when you are putting these things in uh, uh, my uh, millstone then you know there are other things as well which are becoming a part of the this material the mixture is forced through a screen removing the larger largest of the impurities first the seed basically now this is the most easiest method that you could you put through a screen and you can remove the large particles the sifted resin resin mixture is put into large jars and stomped by a worker basically they you know they stand on it and they stomp it by their feet to crush granules and force the red dye from the lag seeds and the insects remain will be freed from the resins and then uh, from this force which you know stomping the crushing from their foot from their foot they basically what they do they basically crushing the lag seed and the insects remains will be freed from the resin those will be you know they will they will uh, they will be separated dye water scum and other impurities are then washed away with several resins because you know as this is not uh, the base resin which is coming out from the um, bug is not water soluble so though uh, we can you know wash it uh, and make it clearer dye water scum and other impurities are then washed away in several rinsing the mixture is spread out on a concrete floor to dry and called seed lag because it resembles seed shell lag may be made from seed lag by hand or by modern mechanical equipments nearly all american used shell lag is refined with the help of machinery using a heat or solvent based process mixing of shell lag for the consumer large shellac manufacturers are shipped the dry shellac flakes which you know which gather uh, which, as we have seen earlier they then remoisturize the flake by adding denatured ethyl alcohol shellac is offered to the consumer in flake form or suspended in denatured alcohol it is the later than the is most popular with the consumer when it is actually suspended in denatured alcohol it is more popular manufacturers of shellac refer to the concentration of shellac shellac flakes to denatured alcohol in terms of pounds of cuts this is basically 
how it is uh, you know uh, marketed as in terms of pounds of blood means the number of pounds of shellac flake dissolved into a single gallon of denatured alcohol pounds of cut means the number of pounds of shellac flake which is dissolved in a single gallon how much uh, number of pounds is dissolved in single gallon of denatured alcohol thus a one pound cut of shellac contains one pound of shellac flakes dissolved in a gallon of alcohol means a pound cut is pound of cut means uh, one pound of cut means that one pound of shellac flake is dissolved in one gallon of denatured alcohol. The most popular shade of shellac sold pre-mixed is the orange shellac, although clear or white shellac is also offered pre-mixed to the consumer. But the most popular shade which is sold is orange shellac. For wood workers who prefer the deep rich color of garnet shellac, or button leg, the dried flakes of these shellac may be purchased from the manufacturer and mixed with the nature at cover by the consumer himself. Okay. Sorry. What are the other uses? There are other uses. Uh, it is used in confectionaries, uh, hats, pharmaceuticals, electrical, wood furnishes, uh, vinyl records, food coating, electrical, everything, and there are other things as well. Most com commonly known as wood finish, shellac most fascinating use of are in everyday products. Because of its specific characters, it has a wide variety of uses, most of which continue to this day. Although it is often a food ingredient, it is commonly known in the food industry as confectioner's glaze. Have you ever wondered how M&Ms don't melt in your hand, but in your mouth? It is the same insect excretion as time release pharmaceutical pills. The top four uses of the dry shellac flakes are pharmaceutical, confectionery, hats, and foot coating. In uh, confectionery, shellac is uh, used to provide a protective coating for candies. And like glazes, glaze like you know you have seen M and M's, uh, and um, you have seen that they don't melt in your hand but on in your mouth. That's why you know these these um, things are coated. The hats, you know, these type of the cowboy hats specifically. These, you know, they are also uh, covered with a, a shellac material because it it gives a very a stiffen, you know, look to the hat because the cowboy hat is kind of, uh, you know, if you see, uh, if you Google it, you will see that it's of a specific shape. So that that shape is maintained by the use of shellac. In pharmaceuticals, shellac is used for coating entire enteric pills so that they do not dissolve in stomach but in lower intestine. While in electrical shellac mixed with marble dust, it is used for lamps, manufacturers to glue metals base to glass in in this in this in this incandescent bulb while for wood finish shellac is beautiful wood finish and has characteristics like no other finish in vinyl records you know the they they do not use uh, we do not use vinyl records now but before you know when uh, it uh, on vinyl records as you know it was continuously rolling and rolling so we need a protective covering so you know it is not uh, destroyed by the recorder which is you know which is getting the voice so we have to cover it with some protective covering and shellac was the best covering for it also um, uh, it is it was also used for uh, food coating and you know that um, the apples are usually covered with waxes to give it a pleasant look so it is not approved and uh, waxes are not good for health but uh, shellac, due to its FDA approval, shellac is used to coat apples and other fruits as well. Um, shellac mixed with marble dust is used by lamp manufacturers to glue the metal bases to glass uh, the incandescent bulb. And there are other uses as well. And there are many other uses in paint industry and in varnishing and leather finish. There are also other ingredients as well. Okay, the next uh, is honey. The next drug which we are going to study is honey. 
Honey is a bee concentrated and processed product of nectar from the flowers of numerous plants. Basically, you can say the origin is our flowers, but the nectar of flowers. The, the honey originate from the nectar of flowers, but from nectar, you know, nectar is not processed and it is not uh, converted into honey. The bee does that. So we will say that honey comes from the animal origin, which is bee itself. From the flowers of mineral plant, this saccharine secretion is deposited in honey formed by bees. Uh, this saccharine secretion, that is the nectar, is deposited in honeycombs by a bee. What is the composition of honey? Honey is composed of sugar, about 76%. Water is about 18%. And other ingredients that make about 6%. Sugar give the main characteristics of honey, characteristic of honey. As we all know, it is sweet. Water follows, as you know, it is also, it has a consistency, special consistency, which water gives. And components that are found in small quantities, which are in small quantities, they basically determine the difference between various types of honey. You have seen there in market, there are different types of honeys and these different, different types of honeys, basically the difference is not of sugar or water content, but the other components which are found in honey. These differences are the color, aroma, and taste. Uh, these, the taste and the color, the aroma, they are dependent on the components that are found in small quantities. Okay, now we'll see the different uh, components one by one. Number one is sugar. Sugar, what type of sugar is present in honey? Sugar in honey is not a single species. Uh, but consists of three kinds of sugar. These are fruit sugar, that is fructose, which has among the highest, that is 41%. Grape sugar, which is glucose, which is about 34% of ordinary sugar, and uh, sucrose, which is between 1 to 2%. The ratio of one type of sugar to other depends upon the source, basically. That is the flower pasture and to some extent to enzyme it taste. These um, ratio of sugar, it depends on which flower the bee is sucking the nectar and also the enzyme present in the stomach of the bee, that, that is a bee, that is the invertase enzyme. It depends on those that how much the bee is able to convert the nectar into these uh, different types of sugars. This enzyme is located in the flower from the bees collect nectar, but it is also present in the bee's body. Other ingredients, the other ingredients include minerals, proteins, acids, and undetermined matter. What are these undetermined matter? Of course, when you know, when the bee goes uh, into flower from one flower to another, there are pollens stick to it. There are the matters, you know, which stick to the body. So the, the, the honey also have those things in, in it. So they are called the undetermined matters. The ratio of these components varies from one type of honey to another. Okay, there are certain minerals. What are the minerals? Minerals has about 3.68% minerals they are present. Although this part of this honey does not make a large amount, mineral in honey raises the value of honey for human consumption. Basically, because of this part, it is mainly used and it is it uh, carries value. Honey contains most of the minerals, which are potassium, chlorine, sulfur, calcium, sodium, phosphorus, magnesium, silicon, iron, magnesium, and copper. When the observed mean value, dark types of honey are richer in min minerals than the lighter. If you observe it very uh, observe, then we say the dark type of honeys are richer in minerals than the lighter ones. Of course, single can find a darker species that are poorer than some lighter species. Proteins, what type of proteins there, uh, have we, uh, we found in honey? Proteins come in honey from nectar and pollen as an integral part of plants. Protein in honey may be in the form of a very complex structure or in the form of simple compounds, that is amino acids. Protein can be in very complex structure, we may be and in, in uh, simplest form, that is the amino acid forms. What are the acids? Acids are also components of honey. Before it was, you know, uh, before it was 
believe uh, believe that bees by stomach uh, insert bee. You know, people used to believe that the the sting of the bee is in its stomach. So you know they uh, think that as you know it was uh, the formic acid was there in one in uh, bees sting formic acid is there. So they thought that even the honey they are getting out from their mouth, they also contain the same formic acid and they should not eat it. But it was not like that. Later it was found that it's not like that. Before it was believed that bees by stomach insert bee venom into the uh, cell honeycomb with honey and make it so conserved. Given that one of the main component of bee venom is formic acid, it was thought that the honey has a formic acid. Even some people urged to other not to use honey because of that. Studies have shown that they are completely different acids that are composed in honey, mostly apple and lemon acid. Vitamins, uh, vitamins in honey has a very modest quantities and sufficient for the needs of the organism. In, uh, in between are vitamin C and some B complexes vitamins that is riboflavin, pentothenic acid, pyridoxin, biotin, and nicotinic acids are present. Essential oils, among essential oils, uh, this give the characteristic order of the honey which we use. Essential oils give the characteristic aroma of honey. These, these substances are very unstable and quickly evaporates by heating honey. This is uh, the um, pie chart for the different uh, composition, different um, constituents of honey and in which composition they are present. How do be, uh, bees make honey? Basically, what is happening? The bees go to the flowers and they suck the nectar through their bee tongue. And then they store in their stomach. You know, there are two stomachs of honey, uh, of bees basically. One is to store the nectar only. That is called the honey stomach basically. There, you know, they store, but in their enzyme, which is called the invertase enzyme, they basically... Uh, break down the nectar into fructose and makes the makes fructose and glucose. These fructose and glucose inside honey, they spit or they they, they take it out and they uh, store it in the bee comb, the honey bee comb. And there, you know, when they 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 secrete is excrete out, it is in a liquid state, kind of a liquid liquefied state. So it stays there, and the water evaporates and the honey thickens. When the honey thickens to a sufficient, uh, uh, with which the bees think that now it is sufficiently thickened, then and the bee, you know, cover it with a wax cap. This is also, you know, this wax is very important and uh, we also get it from bees wax and this, then this honey is then protected in the honey bee hive, which we use. Uh, historical uses, the antimicrobial property of honey have been known to humans for centuries. Honey was used to treat infected wounds as long ago as 2000 years before bacteria were discovered to be the cause of infection. Before even we know that the infection is caused by bacteria, even before that, honey was used for the same purpose and we didn't know that it had antibacterial properties or bacteria because we didn't know that bacteria is causing the infection. But it was used in uh, 50 AD. Dice for dice describe honey as being good for all rotten and hollow ulcers. It, it was used for ulcers as, as well. Honey has been reported to have an inhibitory effect to around 60 species of bacteria, including aerobes, anaerobes, gram positive, and gram negative bacteria. An antifungal action has also been observed from some yeast and species of aspergillus and penicillin as well as the common dermophytes. The current prevalence of antibiotic resistant microbial species has led to re-evaluation of the therapeutic use of ancient remedies, including honey. Aristotle, when discussing different honey, referred to pale honey as being good as a slave for sore eyes and wounds. This is as good as a slave, uh, a salve for sore eyes and wounds. 
Honey is also used for calf asthma. This is the very common use and we use uh, for this purpose. Honey is used for calf asthma and hay fever. It is also used for diarrhea and stomach ulcers caused by infection with Helicobacter pylori. Uh, honey is also used as a source of carbohydrate during vigorous exercise. Some people apply honey directly to the skin for wound healing, burn, sunburn, cataract, and diabetic foot ulcers. Topical use of honey has a long history. In fact, it is considered one of the oldest known wound dressings. Honey was used by the ancient Greek physician in 50 AD for sunburns and infected wounds. Honey's healing properties are mentioned in Quran, Bible, and Torah. In food, honey is used as a sweetening agent. In manufacturing, honey is used as a fragrance and in moisturizers and as a moisturizer in soap and cosmetics. The pH of honey is very important. Honey is characteristically acidic with a pH of between 3.2 and 4.5, which is low enough to be inhibitory to many animal pathogens. Because of this pH, you know, it, is, it has the antibacterial activity because the minimum pH value for the growth of some common pathogen species are uh, like Estesheria coli is uh, 4.3, Salmonella species, they grow on at four, they die at four, sorry, Pseudomonas at 4.4 and Streptococcus pyogens, uh, they uh, propagate at 4.5. Thus, in undiluted honey is acidity is a significant antibacterial factor. Hydrogen peroxide is produced enzymatically in honey. The glucose oxidase enzyme is secreted from the hypopharyngeal gland of the bee into the nectar to assess the formation of honey from the nectar. These are certain nutrients which are present in honey and the amount which are present. B1, B2, nicotinic acid, B6 is also present, pentothenic acid, ascorbic acid, in minerals, we have calcium, chlorine, copper, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, zinc. And the, bacteri the bacteria uh, against which it is effective, you see uh, there are a number of bacteria which are, which is uh, um, against which honey is very effective. Okay, this is all for today. We'll start gelatin from our next lecture. Hope to see you all soon.